Good morning, Zio here, and uh, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving, had lots of food to eat, and whatever else it is that you did on Thanksgiving, and of course, you know, didn't kill any of your relatives because, you know, maybe they're a pain in your tail. I don't know. So today, we are going to now hit the grind again, we're going to talk about the news, and we're going to start with Google Stadia, you know, the uh, thing that's currently still on fire. Huh. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? What is it that we're actually going to talk about when it comes to Stadia today? It's going to be the 4K 60 frame for, uh, uh, the, the, the frames per second. Apparently, I can't speak. Like always, I cannot read in the mornings. I can't speak in the mornings. It happens all the time. I don't have enough coffee to actually be able to function yet. But, uh, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> So, we're going to go ahead and get into Stadia and the 4K 60 frames per second issue. Stadia, of course, has touted and marketed itself with a number of things, um, like 40 or like 4K 60 FPS, among other stuff that it, of course, did not deliver on launch. Um, but yeah, the question is why? Why did it not deliver 4K 60 frames per second? I don't see why it wouldn't have, or why it can't. There should be no problem with it offering that, considering it does say that it will deliver this. However, it doesn't seem to be doing it. Instead, it's doing about 1080, 30, 1080, uh, 60, and upscaling that to 4K. And um, of course, the results of that is a uh, kind of a fuzzy mess, <laughs> I guess you can say. It doesn't look good at all. You're better off getting it at pure 1080 if you ask me, instead of doing this upscale with these fuzzy looking things and graphics not properly rendering, but that's just me. Uh, when it comes to, of course, 4K 60 FPS, it's not something that I normally look for in a game, mainly because, uh, well, I can't run it. I don't have a 4K system. But I do have a beefy enough system to handle what's out there at the highest graphical difficulties. Graphical difficulties. Graphical fidelity. Um, is that the right word? That's the word we're going to go with. But uh, Google's response to it is uh, quite an interesting thing, I find. Um, I'm just really Google. Okay. So Stadia streams at 4K and 60 FPS, and that includes all aspects of our graphics pipeline from game to screen, GPU, encoder, Chromecast Ultra, all output at 4K to 4K TV with the appropriate internet connection. The problem is we've got people out there with way above the recommended or necessary internet connection incapable of doing 4K. So this is Google's attempt to, uh, Tell us why they can't do the 4K they've promised on anything. Developers make Stadia games work hard to deliver the best streaming experience for every game. Look uh, like you see on all platforms, that includes a variety of techniques to achieve the best overall quality. We give developers the freedom of how to achieve the best image quality and frame rate on Stadia, and we are impressed with what they have been able to achieve from day one. All right, if you are impressed with the fact that you have fallen so short of what you were offering people, then uh, you need to go ahead and stop because Google, you have no idea what it is that you're doing. You have no idea who you're marketing to. The people you claim you're marketing to have no interest in your games to begin with. You, you claim you're not marketing towards gamers, but you clearly are. Um, Xbox's xCloud in beta is beating the pants off of you right now, but let's continue. We expect that many developers can, and in most cases will, continue to improve their games on Stadia, and because Stadia lives in our data centers, developers are able to innovate quickly while delivering even better experiences directed to you without the need for game patches or download. which. 
Granted, it's the best thing about Stadia. Uh, this is where I'm going to give them a, you're, this is good, um, loading. <laughs> there is like no loading. It, it's instantaneous. You know, you, you purchase the thing, you immediately boot it up, no patches, no downloads, whatever, because, you know, it's, it's living in their server. It's on their PC, essentially. Um, but yeah, that means you may not get be getting the exact experience you expect right now. Why not, though? They should. People are paying or buying into this thing. They were, you know, tricked into being a founder of this thing on all this stuff that you promised and you haven't delivered on anything. I mean, heck, even your founder keys and everything else went out screwy because you apparently are incapable of doing a mass email to everybody and going, hey, here's your keys because you've got to roll them out staggered for some reason. And even then you staggered them the wrong way and backwards in 15 different ways to Sunday and nobody could figure out what the heck is going on because Google, as the company that it is, should not have had that issue. But, uh, yeah... But could in the near future, oh, oh goodness, they could get where they need to be in the near future, woo. Anyway, and we have to say our experience with Stadia so far has been highly positive. <laughs> I'm sure it has been highly positive considering most people can't do anything. Hmm. I mean, let's just ignore the latency issues. Okay, positive. Anyway, we've been running it through the Chromecast Ultra on a 65-inch LG OLED TV. And that means a lot, doesn't it? Actually, it really means absolutely jack. It's just the brand of TV. It's a really big TV, and it uses LED backlighting. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> And uh, graphically, it's still impressive considering there isn't a game console in sight. Yeah. Um, here we go. Is, is this what I'm looking for? I think it is. Okay. So let's go, go ahead and get into this thing called Remote Play, shall we? This is what Google Stadia is offering you. It's Remote Play. All right? And uh, this here... Is the PS Vita okay? The PS Vita has a remote play option. Uh, I'm pretty sure it had a remote play option. That maybe the PSP did too. This is probably, by the way, in my opinion, the best handheld to have ever hit the market. However, it failed and flopped due to other reasons that could make an interesting video just to go over. Because, gosh, I wish this thing had kicked off. I love this thing. Anyway, <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so remote play. This is what Stadia is essentially offering you. It's offering you the ability to play something from anywhere and the games and stuff are housed elsewhere, right? And uh, essentially how this thing would work was you have it on your PlayStation, your PlayStation's at home or whatever, you take this with you, you fire it up, you can play certain games that have that ability to sort of be beamed from your PlayStation to this which means this thing really isn't handling the hardware or anything, you know, the, the uh, processing power, right? Uh, instead, it's just being handled by your PlayStation at the house, okay? Or wherever your PlayStation is. Maybe it's your friend's PlayStation. I don't know. I don't know what you do with your life. But uh, anyway, so it, it beams the gameplay to it and allows you to play the games, right? That, that's what remote play essentially is. Um, that's what Stadia is doing. So if there you've got the PC versions of games, you know, you're able to experience what the PC has to offer. And uh, generally speaking, most of the time, PCs have a superior experience over the consoles. That's why you've got the memes of like PC Master Race out there. Although you will occasionally hear about things of like bad PC ports too, uh, where the PC port is just so bad 
that it, it requires a major fix on the developer side or something because it is just broken beyond playability. Uh, one of the Assassin's Creed's, I think it was Odyssey or something, had this exact same issue where it got its PC port, but its PC port was essentially melting down, you know, GPUs and everything else because it was just so graphically intensive for some unknown reason at the time. And uh, eventually, I think they did get it fixed. So, you know, it wasn't being completely handled by just the GPU. It was being, you know, properly managed, all the resources properly managed among the computer, among other things and stuff. Uh, so it wouldn't be essentially just breaking your system while trying to play it. So bad PC ports do exist. Um, but what, what, what does all this have to do with, you know, streaming and things? Um, when it comes to developing a game, you know, generally you have to develop games for different specifications. Consoles are the easiest, right? Because you have a set of specifications that you can uh, look at and go, okay, we need it to run on X hardware. And when it comes to, say, the X-Bone and the PlayStation, generally that hardware is not a whole lot different from one another because they are the major competing um, platforms in the console market. So their um, hardware is generally pretty close to one another, making it, in my opinion, easier to develop between the two systems. But then you say you take something that looks amazing on, say, the Xbox or the PlayStation, and you port it to, like, the Nintendo Wii U, or in this case now, the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is not a beefy console compared to the other two. Uh, it requires a graphical downgrade uh, among other things in order to properly run on that hardware because let's face it Nintendo does like to innovate with a lot of things however it just doesn't give us the uh, hardware specifications we'd expect from the other two big ones now when it comes to PC it's a bit different because PC has a wide variety of things that can be done uh, from your graphics cards to your processors you know you've you could have anywhere from single dual quad core um, more if you want uh, your your pro, uh, your GPUs can be various different kinds uh, radions and everything else it could have anywhere from like one gig of you know ddr or two gigs three gigs something like that then of course you've got the ram you could have you know four eight sixteen thirty two stuff like that and and then of course you know the finest finer part of course is going to be your motherboards and your hardware and stuff like that which makes it incredibly hard to uh sometimes develop for pc so sometimes you have to sort of go and find what the basic you know the the least common denominator essentially of a, a gaming rig or a pc rig might be and sort of develop with it in mind and start building upon from there where you've got to then okay we can support 4k with this if we absolutely wanted to but it also can be run on a potato on its lower settings which is one of the reasons like world of warcraft became such a successful game is the fact that it had the ability to run on a potato while also simultaneously running on a really good high-end PC and looking great. Um, so, <laughs> with all that out of the way, Stadia here is essentially a giant PC housed in a building somewhere or multiple buildings. Essentially, it's their servers, right? So they've got the PC versions of these games, I would assume... Anyway, if they, they know what they're doing, if the PC port is good, of course, you know, where they can then beam it out to you to play. And they're handling all the hardware stuff. So when they sit there and they tell me that Bungie has purposely restricted the Stadia version of Destiny 2 to 108030, I can't help but ask why. What is the point to that? Like, what deal do you have that is so bad that supposedly Bungie has restricted your, um, essentially your output, your video output, considering you could just purchase the game, put it on your computer and remote play it elsewhere and be just fine at, as long as your internet connection can handle it, of course, if your PC can handle it, can handle the 40K. So, you know, it kind of perplexes me, their, you know, reason behind this. The, the developer has decided we're not allowed to do 4K. 
when the games themselves can run 4K. You know, they've been running 4K. This is from 2017 on the Destiny 2 when they were pushing out the update to be able to run 4K on Xbox One and the PS4 uh, Pros. And of course, with Red Dead Redemption, um, October 17th, 2019, PC, 4K at 60 frames. There should be no reason for it to not be able to run through Stadia at 4K 60. So, you know, and I hadn't seen anything from the developers themselves. I've just seen Google saying the developers, of course, said or have restricted our access to 4K 60. Even though they're capable of running 4K 60, hardware can run it. But the developers won't allow it for some odd known reason. And of course, the developers haven't come out and said anything that I have seen anyway at this point. It makes me wonder, maybe their hardware can't actually run 4K60 for whatever the reasoning is. Especially considering their, that was one of their big selling points. You look at any of their... Uh, you know, any of their commercials that I have seen multiple of lately, 4K, 60 frames per second, it's, it's, it's a life-changing experience. You know, that sort of thing. Because they're, they're clearly marketing to the gaming, especially the PC gaming side. But, um, you know, who generally t typically look at these things, you know, can it run 1080 at 60 or 4K at 60? Things like that, but uh, yeah, th this this excuse is just so weird. <laughs> now, essentially, they've got a platform that is all it's doing is remote play, and they claim they can run 4K, but the developers are just not allowing it. It just seems odd, considering the games in question can run 4K and have been running 4K on other systems. They, they run that on the PCs, for crying out loud. And essentially, all you have, Google, is a glorified PC. A, a really big, beefy PC, you know, that can beat the pants off of anybody else. Or at least you'd think it could. At least maybe they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> anyway. That's going to be it from uh, me today. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.